Hello there! It's great to be on your screen again. We've got another fantastic lesson for you. And this lesson was inspired from our friend Monica, who loves flamingos for their shape and their colour. So I thought it might be nice to paint an abstract painting of flamingos. This type of thing is great because nowadays we're so busy and this painting can be done in about an hour and can be hanging on the wall for you to admire in that time. So let's get into it. Well, because this is more of an abstract project, we're going to suggest the water and we're going to bear in mind its fluid nature. And to be honest, it's more important to create an interesting pattern rather than portraying water exactly as it would look. And if it does look like water, that's even better. The paints that I'll be using, as I said before, are the dimension paints. And I'm gonna use the colors straight out of the tube for their vibrant nature. And I'm going to apply it with a palette knife. So let's get this paint on. I'm using zinc. Cerulean. That's not the proper way to pronounce cerulean, but I think it sounds better. I also lay down some cyan and then apply it with the number four palette knife in long horizontal strokes. As I do this, I charge the palette knife with zinc white. So it roughly blends. The trick here is not to over blend the colors. So we get that marbling look to the paint. I want every part of the paint to be appealing, no matter how important the element is. Next, I lay on the cyan. This is basically a rich primary blue. I drag this into the cerulean and I lay it on. Lots of paint, lots and lots. Abstract art is just as much about texture as it is about colour. So let's paint up our flamingos. Now, I'm not going to draw the outline of each flamingo in. I'm going to paint the silhouette of each bird directly in with an apricot type of mix. Now, flamingos are a fairly simple shape, but if you need some reference, then go to montmart.net, then to the TV section, then to the flamingo lesson, and you'll find this print out PDF of flamingos in different poses. So let's create this apricot mix and get our flamingos on. I create the first colour from brilliant red, titanium white and medium yellow. The quantities aren't really that important, just create a pink that you like to look at. Once I'm happy with my pink, I apply it with my number 12 angle brush. Try to get the bird down as quickly as possible. We want spontaneity. Then do another, then another, and another, and keep adding birds until you're happy with the composition. In this work, simplicity is the key. Like this resting flamingo, is just a twist of the brush, and there you have it. Quick fun projects like this are a nice break to do in between more challenging works, I think. Well, now let's lay on the reflections. And of course, they're directly under our flamingos. And again, don't spend too much time. Get it down as quickly as we can. So turn the canvas upside down. It's just easier to work out. Lay the birds on with the same pink, but water it down a little bit to create a weaker tone. Next, I add pure brilliant red to the underside of each bird. Bring a few stripes into the bird to suggest wings. Now let's bring this all together and create the legs. And we're going to use the same brush, the angle, and we're just gonna use the edge to put the legs in. And we're gonna do it with red. The angle is a very versatile brush. But to get a fine edge, you have to flatten the tip so it is sharp. This can be done on the palette as you charge your brush. Then just lay in the legs and remember to mirror them upside down in the reflection. Oh. <coughs> well, how quick. 
fun and easy was that? And I think I've portrayed a flock of flamingos quite well. If you did like this lesson and you're not there now, then come over to montmart.net where we've got lots more lessons for beginners and experienced artists too. There's also links to our Facebook so you can join or you can subscribe to our family feed where you can get weekly hints and art tips. So until next time, keep on painting.